Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video, we'll see how to use the most important features of Lightworks 14. Leave comments in the video description to improve our future video guides for the software. Lightworks is a video editing software available in two versions, the free version and the pro professional version, which is on payment. In this video, we will use the free version, but the basic features we see do not change with the version you use. When you open Lightworks, the project browser opens, consolidating all your Lightworks projects that you've made. You can open one by double-clicking on it, or create a new one by going to Create a New Project in the top left corner. Then, type a project name, choose its frame rate, which is the number of frames per second, or FPS, that the video must have when exported, and then go to Create. Shortly after, the main interface opens. This is divided in four main workspaces, all listed on top. Log, Edit, VFX, and Audio. The Log workspace is used to check your own media files and metadata in detail. Edit is used to create your customized video. And VFX and Audio are used to implement video effects and audio corrections. In this beginner tutorial, we will see the Edit workspace only to start as a beginner. The Edit workspace is composed of several parts. On top, you have the Navigation panel and the Video Preview panels. And at the bottom of the main timeline is where you will edit and work with your media. To start working, you have to import all necessary media, such as videos, pictures and photos, and sound files. On top of the Navigation panel, you have several tabs. Choose Local Files to browse for your own media files, shown with a thumbnail, name, format, date, and size. Double-click on a file to import it into your project, as the imported note says. All imported media are listed under Project Contents. Remember that you may not import videos where the frame rate is too low to be matched with the project one. You can also preview a media file imported by double-clicking on it. This will be shown in the central video preview, complete with a simple player below. You can play back videos and sound, as well as pictures which are shown as static videos that last one minute. Once media files are imported, just drag and drop these on the timeline below. These are shown as colored rectangles called clips, showing their file name and sound waveform. To check these in detail, you can zoom in and out around the red playhead by using your mouse wheel while holding Control down. Depending on the kind of media content, these clips are collected inside different tracks. By default, you have one video track indicated with a V letter plus a number that lists all visual media, such as video frames, images, and text, and one pair of audio tracks that collect everything regarding sound, music, and speech, indicated by an A letter plus a number. These are used in couples since it dedicated one audio track per each stereo channel. You can add other audio and video tracks by right-clicking on them, going to Sequence Commands, Tracks, and then to Add Video or Add Audio. To rename tracks, right-click on a track, and then to Rename under Track Commands. To delete tracks, right-click and go to Delete under Tracks, selecting all the tracks to be removed. It is very important to preview your project while making it. The central video preview is used to check your clips imported. The other is used to check the content of your project timeline, in particular where the red playhead is placed. This is also indicated by a red rhombus below the video preview. You can click on the timeline to check a particular frame, or click and drag the playhead to check motion frame by frame. If you need to play back audio as well, you have to use the player right below the video preview. Let's see how to work with your clips inside the timeline. You can move a clip in time by clicking and dragging it. You can move within the same track or in another track. If you have videos with sound, both of these are moved together. If you want to make video frames and audio independent, just click on the video or the audio track name on the left and move. 
When you click on a video or an audio track name, you will lock it, and this can't be edited until you unlock it. Remember to use Ctrl and Z to undo any action if you make a mistake. Pay attention when you overlap clips. If you do so on the same track, the new one will replace part of the older one. If clips are overlapped on different video tracks, the clip on the upper track is shown first in order. By default, the timeline lasts 5 minutes, but you can extend it by moving a clip over it. To split a clip, just place the playhead where you want to split and press the X key. When you right-click on a clip, you have several options to edit your clip as you need. You can use Remove and Delete to remove a clip. As the icon suggests, Remove simply removes the clip, whereas Delete removes both the clip and the time gap it leaves. All the other options, from Slip to Trim, are made by working with the clip's edges. Let's take a look. When you hover over any clip edge, some white marks appear on it, which can be directed toward the clip internal or outside it external. Each of these represent a particular editing to be applied on the clip when it is moved. You can enable an edge by clicking on it, and this will be highlighted in yellow. To disable it, click on it once again. Let's take for example the beginning edge of the clip. If you enable it on the internal side, you will be able to stretch or shorten the clip by keeping the time gap from the previous clips. Whereas if you enable the edge externally, you will regulate the time gap only without touching the clip. If you enable both the internal and the external edge, you will stretch the clip by changing the time gap. If you edit the clip by using the ending edge, this works in the same way, and will act on the time gap with respect to the following clips in time. You can also enable both the edges to edit the clip in other ways. For example, if you enable both the internal ones, you will save the previous and the following time gap, so you will time shift the content of the clip when you move it. If you enable both the external ones, you will stretch both the time gaps and move the clip without overlapping others. Remember that you can stretch or shorten all clips as you like, but if you shorten video and sound clips, you will cut part of their content. Whereas if you stretch them over their original duration, simple black video frames with no sound are added. If you want to stretch and shorten clips without editing its content, but by acting on its playhead speed, you can right-click on it and go to speed so you will shorten the clip by playing it faster and extend it in time by playing it slower. This is the very basic editing you can make with Lightworks 14. If you want to get to know how to apply text, video effects with VFX, and how to adjust audio with the audio workspace, check out the next video in this guide. The timeline you see shows the content of a single sequence. A sequence is a group of clips placed in time and adjusted as you like. By default, a new Lightworks project is always composed by a single sequence, called Sequence 1, as you can see on top of the main video preview. Click on it and rename it, and apply with the Enter key. A Lightworks project can be composed by multiple sequences, each with its own set of clips edited and placed in time. If you go to Sequences, which is right next to the Navigation panel, you can check all the sequences inside your project. If you right-click on a vacant space and go to Empty Sequence under Make, you will create a new empty sequence. Double-click on it to open it on the timeline below, and start editing. The main video preview will refer to the new sequence. You can double-click on another sequence to open and edit it from the navigation panel. Sequences are very useful. On one hand, they can be used to group edited clips together. On the other hand, they can be imported inside other sequences as simple clips. Remember that once imported, these clips become completely independent from the original sequence. Your Lightworks project is saved any time. When you finish working with it, you can come back to the project browser by using the button in the top left corner. 
Let's see how to extract your final video from your project. First of all, open the right sequence to export. Then, just right-click on an empty space, go to Export, and choose how to export. Let's see, for example, how to export a YouTube video. On the Export dialog box, choose the frame rate, the video resolution under Size, where to save it under Folder, and the video name under Name. Then just click on Start Below. The whole sequence will be rendered in the background, from the beginning of the first clip to the end of the last clip inside the timeline. Thanks for watching this video. Leave feedback and suggestions in the video description and check out our next video guide to increase your knowledge.